<laughs> All right, as 10 2020 Democrats get ready to take the stage tonight, the Tax Foundation putting out an analysis of their plans. And apparently the plans, supported by most, if not all, candidates, would reverse President Trump's tax cuts. They would hike corporate tax rates, and not to mention Medicare for All and other very expensive government programs. Now, the study found those plans would eliminate up to 400,000 jobs. Joining me now from the National Taxpayer Union, Matty Duppler, and Republican congressional candidate, Kimberly K Klasik. Uh, Matty, let me start with you. First of all, congratulations. Thank you so much. It's great to have you back on the show, Mom. Happy to be back. <laughs> all right, let's <laughs> talk about this. I mean, listen, we just talked about the amazing economy that we have seen uh, right. while we've had these massive tax cuts. And by the way, amazing for blue-collar workers, yep. amazing for household formation, amazing for a part of the economy that has been shut out for a long time. Yep, and listen, the White House was unequivocal on that point. When we were talking about the Tax Cut and Jobs Act in 2017, the administration said the point of cutting the corporate income tax rate is to make America competitive again. And why is it important that businesses are competitive here? It's so they can invest in their workers, and we're seeing that. You mentioned that workers at the lower part of the pay scale are the ones who are seeing the fastest amount of incomes increase. The, the uh, White House had said going into the tax reform bill that an uh, average American worker will see a $4,000 income increase as a result of cutting the corporate income tax rate. That is because when you unleash capital, businesses are allowed to invest it where it is most profitable and most productive for them to do so. So that's extremely important. So when you hear Democrats who are running for president talking about reversing the corporate income tax cuts, what they're talking about is increasing the cost of capital. That makes it more expensive right. to do business here. That means it's more pressure on wages. That means fewer jobs for Americans here in the United States. You know, of course, Kimberly, uh, these Democrats, most of them are elected officials in places where that aren't doing really well economically per se, or certainly pockets, uh, certain pockets of the economy aren't doing well. You're running for an empty seat in, in, in Baltimore, and, and that's one of the, uh, an area where the economic plight is well known to many, particularly after an expose of sorts that you did. What would you do and what will you tell the folks in Baltimore to change how they've been voting for a century? Well, I've, I've been trying to do this now for about six months, but yes, I, I filed just this week. Um, but I'm telling people, look, if you want more of the same, keep voting more of the same. We saw today uh, Baltimore former mayor Catherine Pugh was indicted on charges of pay to play. Um, you know, you see all these federal grants coming into Baltimore City, but you don't actually see that money actually doing anything in Baltimore City. And why? Because it, it doesn't actually make it to where it's supposed to go. And so if taxpayers all across this country want to see better, especially in Baltimore City, where we saw in 2015, we had the riots, and everybody saw, as Bernie Sanders pointed out, it looked like a third world country. And so taxpayers are paying into these grants, and we expect to see some results. And so I hope people understand that, you know, if you keep voting for these Democrats, and I, I hope tonight the Democrats could actually explain how Medicare for All will actually work out, um, I believe that would really drastically change our economy. We can't lose those jobs in the medical field, yeah. but I hope they explain it. But they, people need to understand that some of this money is going into someone's pockets and there's a lot of corruption. And as a Republican, I hope to change that. Of course, Maddie, when uh, Elizabeth Warren gave us details on her plan, her her stock went down precipitously. So I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not sure how fine of a, a point that anybody wants to put on these plans tonight. But uh, there is something to be said about what we're being offered up this election season. And uh, essentially, it's like we can have a system where we can tax people who have done extraordinarily well and redistribute that money, or we yep. can have a system where people can pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. Americans, I think, are going to be asked to make one of those choices next year, Maddie. Yeah, and Democrats have been trying to obscure the full cost of their uh of their spending plans by saying that taxes may go up, but the uh, s uh, the services that Americans will get in response will overcome the amount that they'll increase in their own tax burden. That is simply not the case. The notion that we can continue to just tax businesses and the wealthy in this country and pay for some of the proposals that Democrats are suggesting, the math doesn't work out. And it's because if you look at some countries who have done this, they do increase taxes on the middle right. class and on all workers to pay for those sorts of proposals. So look for that tonight for Democrats to continue to obscure what they're actually proposing when they're talking about new spending. Well, Maddie and Kimberly, thank you both very much. Uh, glad to have thank you, you back. And it's glad to see you, Kimberly. It's been too long. Thank by the, you. By the you way, too. folks, it's, it's worth noting that we did reach out to Kimberly's opponent for the Maryland House seat, Maya Cummings, and we have not heard back from her yet. We'll love to have her on the show as well.